Guess who's back? One might even say I'm back in action. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! It's me, Rocket, and well, I'm sure you know the drill by now. I'm on a quest to play licensed video games in hope of finding those rare gems that go above and beyond their bargain bin brethren. With how things have been going lately, you might have expected me to cover another 3D platformer based on a Nickelodeon show, but clearly you didn't read the title. Today I'm looking at a game based on a well-loved movie from the Looney Tunes. If you thought I'd be talking about Space Jam, then you are really having trouble with this whole title thing. No, it's Looney Tunes back in action. Looney Tunes Back in Action came out on November 11, 2003, two days after the theatrical release. It has some similarities to the movie, such as the locations and the main MacGuffin, but that's about it. The story starts off with Daffy pitching his latest movie idea, Duck Danger. To mixed opinions. Another superhero movie. Just what the world needs. Mr. Warner isn't too keen on the idea, however, thinking that Daffy wouldn't make for a good action hero. Clearly, he hasn't seen Duck Dodgers. Ooh, time for my nap. Yet again, maybe he has. Dejected, Daffy wonders if he can at least get the deposit back on the giant oversized diamond prop he bought for the pitch, which, upon closer inspection, is revealed to be the ancient mystical blue monkey diamond. Not sure what that is, but let's just go with it. Then Mr. Warner reveals himself to be the evil chairman of the Acme Corporation. A Hollywood executive who's secretly evil? Should we be surprised? Not only that, but he is going to harness the power of the diamond to take over the world! Somehow. Then, a monkey with a top hat bursts in, steals the thing, and runs off. Huh? Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. So now the race is on to catch the monkey, get back the diamond, and save the world! Now we can jump into action as Daffy, avoiding cars to cross the streets and get into the studio lot where you have to chase the monkey and smack him a few times to catch him, only to find out you got the wrong one. And the guards aren't too happy if you bursting in and beating your monkey in public. Cut to Bugs, who's been waiting for his cue. He hears the pathetic cries coming from Daffy and decides he should probably step in and help him out. However, in order for Bugs to get into the studio, he has to make it past Porky Pig. You would think with Bugs being a big movie star, he would be welcomed right in, but Porky is taking his job far too seriously. Thankfully, there is a conveniently placed door that allows you to don a hula costume to distract the guards. Once you get inside the studio, you'll find wanted posters for Daffy everywhere, and Daffy himself hiding under the water tower. You'll have to take down all those posters to clear Daffy's name, because that's how the law works. With all that said and done, you dig Daffy out and also find another monkey. Not the monkey with the diamond, or the one Daffy already caught. A third, unrelated monkey. Because the main collectible in this game is monkeys. Speaking of which, where did the Top Hat monkey go? All we gotta do is check the map screen. Look! Let's see where he lands. Paris said, uh, apparently. Well, just hail a cab and go after him then. Uh, take a check? Too bad our heroes don't have the funds to pay the fare, even with their Hollywood superstar salary. So how exactly are we supposed to get enough money? Well, there was plenty of money lying around back in there. Good point. Why do we even need to chase this monkey for the diamond again? You know, we ought to grab all those stray monkeys too. <laughs> what with the magic diamond and all, you never know who they could be. Oh yeah, it's turning all the obscure Looney Tunes characters into monkeys. That's right. Maybe that's what happened to Brendan Fraser. From here on out, you can now freely swap between the two main characters in order to overcome obstacles and complete objectives with their unique abilities. Both of them come equipped with a weapon to whack monkeys with, Daffy has his trusty frying pan, while Bugs has a handy dandy mallet. Both of them also have the ability to roll around, though it does lead to some weird stuff. Bugs can perform a double jump, but it's mostly for height as it kills your horizontal momentum, while Daffy has a flutter jump to help cross larger gaps. At least it's supposed to do that. Bugs can also burrow underground for treasure where Daffy can swim and dive underwater. Spread throughout each level are these costume doors. By paying a small fare, it allows Bugs and Daffy to gain new abilities for a short time. Bugs gets more variety than Daffy, getting a new outfit with each level, serving as a quick way to solve one or two obstacles. Such as a detective suit letting you see invisible objects, or the space suit that gives you a handy laser gun. Pew, pew. Daffy, on the other hand, only needs one costume, his Duck Danger get up from the opening. Putting this bad boy on fills Daffy with some much needed courage for when things get dangerous. It even makes you invincible while wearing it. And while well, the timer says 30 seconds, it's more like 25. 
since Daffy needs to spend some time posing when he puts it on. I'm the coolest. Well, we better jump back into action and get some more money. And it couldn't hurt to pick up a few more monkeys along the way. Now that you can play as both characters, just push the Y button at any time to switch between the duo. With two characters, some potential for new challenges open up, even if most of the time it's just stand on the button where the other character does something, or stand on two buttons at once. Ooh. I'm sure this will all be familiar to us later. Continuing the trek around the lot, and after a brief stint of throwing exploding chickens, we come across a bunch of reckless drivers causing havoc. There is only one reasonable way to stop this. Jump in a go-kart ourselves and plant high explosives on them in a high-stakes game of hot potato. Let's get dangerous. It's not very hard. Once the streets are safe, another monkey shows up for the taking, although it does run off into the nearby building. Huh. Isn't that neat? We get to head into the room where the game started. Kaboom! What was with that weird camera shake? An explosion at the water tower. Well, better go take a look at the damage. I'm sure a monkey's not too far from the event. Oh, shoot. Hopefully the Warner Brothers are okay. Yet again, they may have been the ones to cause this mess in the first place. This looks like a job for Daffy, since he can swim. You must be joking if you think I'm letting you try this. Gosh dang it, Daffy. Seems we'll need to carefully platform our way over to Daffy. Upon reaching Daffy, Bugs takes over relaxing on the inner tube while Daffy works to unplug all the drains. Once the water is all gone, the monkey who seems to be responsible climbs up the tower, making us chase after him. We have ascended to the heavens, now we must dethrone God. Or I guess just grab the monkey. Congratulations. You have completed all the challenges in Warner Brothers Studios. Return to map screen. I guess there's nothing else worth doing here. Time to hail a cab and get out of here. Mortal Peril, here we come. Mortal Peril? As in risk to life and limb? With the emphasis on life? Yep, I'm out. But what about the wild and all the monkeys? So what's the big deal? Everybody loves monkeys. And... I mean, Daffy does have a point there, but that would make for an exciting game if it ended here. So it's better to follow the money. I mean monkey. Anyway, that's pretty much how all the levels play out. A handful of linear challenges before unlocking the next stage, which you will need to pay to unlock by collecting money that's just lying around. If you have enough, you can just skip ahead, but I wouldn't advise doing that, as there are usually a few more main monkeys to track down, along with some bonus monkeys that you can get in each level, such as by finding Granny, who is usually hanging around the beginning of each level and asks you to hunt down Tweety and Sylvester, who will be hiding in various locations as you progress. Stopping Sylvester from eating Tweety three times will see you rewarded with a monkey. You can also just buy a monkey from the best Looney Tunes character, Foghorn Leghorn. I, I say I caught this thing trying to lift my wallet. It was about as subtle as a hand grenade and a barrel of oatmeal. Lastly, there are the hidden Michigan J Frog statues in the bird seed boxes hiding in each level. Collecting 20 of the statues will reward you with another monkey. While collecting the seven bird seed boxes will unlock a mini game with Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner. Just be aware that leaving a level before collecting all of the boxes means you'll have to collect all seven when you come back the next time, which is kind of a pain. With all that out of the way, time to get back to our globe-trotting monkey-catching escapades. Away! In the quest for the Blue Monkey Diamond, we'll travel to various locales, all of which happen to be places visited in the movie to help tie it all together, and help other Looney Tunes characters in exchange for monkeys because everyone just has them lying around. We travel to Paris and help track down stolen paintings for Redacted or deal with a very lost Omar Fudd. I wonder why no one else hunts at the Wolf. We also head back to Vegas to ride some roller coasters, get into wrestling matches, and generally just wreck up Yosemite Sam's casino, along with catching a show from an annoying owl. Singer, about the moon and the tuna and the springer. I love singer, about a sky of blue or a deep or two or anything. Feel bad. We even get abducted by Marvin the Martian and need to break out of the top secret Area 52 where they are creating horrible abominations like this ungodly thing. Oh, that foghorn. Always making a monkey out of yourself. Eventually, we will finally end up deep in the jungle at the lost temple of the Blue Monkey Diamond. Hey, we must be getting close to the big finish. Big finish? Fuck for him. Fuck attack. If I'm gonna get that tweet bird in this video game, I'll have to make my move soon! Wait, was Sylvester the real bad guy? Let's see, we are here and the temple is over there. 
In order to make it to the temple, there are a few challenges to take care of first. The main one is just getting up there. It's a bit of a hike. Also, the locals aren't too friendly to newcomers, and have even managed to capture a few of the other tunes. Do I have to save him? Once our friends are freed, it's another short climb to reach the innermost part of the temple, which happens to be guarded by Taz. In most cases, it would seem we would have to fight him in order to progress, but we just have to keep his appetite in check for a few minutes. After tackling all of those missions and gathering all the wrong monkeys, we have finally made it to the Temple of the Blue Monkey. Just gotta head right into the end game. Assuming you've collected enough monkeys, that is. As the game decides now, after you spend all the time to get here, that you need 35 monkeys to progress. You even get a special cutscene of Daffy and Bucks talking about how arbitrary it is. I don't know, Daff. Seems like we ought to find more monkeys before we wrap it up. You know, so we can change them all back. I suppose. Cue the montage. I'm gonna go get a snack or something. Take two, we finally made it to the Temple of the Blue Monkey. Now all we have to do is push the giant red button and head right inside. What an abrupt transition. I didn't edit that. They just go from pushing the button to running down the hall like there's fire everywhere. Holy death trap, Batman! Oh, I guess there is along with some other deadly traps like spikes and a giant boulder. Seems like someone didn't want anyone to make it this far. If there ain't jewels on the other side of this door, I'm calling the union. Not only are there jewels, but the chairman. The chairman. Chairman Schmerman. Yes, the I chairman. Managed. Not sure how he managed to get here before us, but that's not important. He's managed to snag the diamond, meaning that he's now able to complete his plan of turning everyone in the world into monkeys. We'll stop you, Chairman. Not if you want to save this monkey. Well, he is only one. Or your friends. <laughs> the real Mr. Warner and this old lady. Not the old lady. However, before they can even act, the Chairman manages to capture Bugs and Daffy, allowing him to successfully transform everyone into monkeys. With some horrifying results. However, due to all the commotion, it causes the ancient stone guardian of the blue monkey diamond to awake. You must pay for your you must pay. While the Stone Monkey gives chase to the main duo, Sylvester takes the opportunity to try and snag Tweety one last time, only for him to fly straight into the monkey ray, which doesn't turn him into a monkey, but rather a giant prehistoric bird. This then transitions into the final battle with the Guardian and... Tweety. Gee, I was sure I'd get to be in the big boss battle. You and me both. For the third time in a row, we find ourselves thrown into a final boss that has nothing to do with anything we've been doing up until now. And to make things better, they don't even explain how it works. So the logical thing would be to just start pushing buttons and hoping something works. A? Nope. B? Nada. Z? Eh, of course not. Maybe X? Or Y? No? L? R? Z again? Still no. Turns out all you have to do is Push forward. That's it. Well, cue the music so we can finish this. Welcome, fight fans, to this monumental matchup between the colossal Stone Monkey Guardian and our own Tweety Saurus, the sentimental favorite. What with the fate of the wild hanging into balance, I'm Bugs Bunny, former star of this adventure. Let's get ready to rumble! So that's it? It's over? Well, that was sort of anticlimactic, don't you think? Once the prehistoric Tweety has delivered the final blow to the giant stone monkey, it causes a chain reaction, making the ruins start falling apart. Our heroes barely make it out in time. Even the top hat monkey managed to sneak out as well. Daffy is finally able to get the drop on the monkey and reclaim the diamond, only for him to trip and drop the thing into the nearby pit of lava. This conveniently undoes the whole monkey thing, turning everyone back to normal, revealing that the top hat monkey was Michigan J. Frog the whole time. That 
that would explain why he was so hard to catch. Without the diamond, I guess the real treasure was the friends we made along the way. Except you, Singa Owl. And well, that's it, really. The game is over. But just because we have seen the credits, doesn't mean we're finished. There are still a few things to take care of. If you manage to finish all the challenges and nab every last monkey, you end up with a grand total of 44 monkeys. Only 44? They couldn't sneak in just one more mission for a total of 45? Well, it turns out there is a secret 45th monkey. Now you might be wondering how you acquire this monkey. Well, it's simple. You cheat. Before jumping into the game, you have the option to move around the menu screen. And you can come across cheat codes. By entering Outtake, you unlock a secret boss fight, which allows you to fight Elmer Fudd as Duck Danger, allowing you to play the fight from the opening cutscene. It's a nice little bonus. There is a good deal of content that was cut or changed before the final release of the game. I was able to find a few things worth sharing, like this old IGN article from 2003, where they talked a bit about some of the scrapped mechanics, like there being various Acme tools and some kind of tune-based power-ups. It would seem that a few of these scrapped tools were turned into hidden unlockables using a few different cheat codes. Also, judging from these old screenshots, it looks like playing cards would have been the main collectible. I even managed to find some old gameplay footage, it's not the best quality, but it does show a few differences, like the hub being less refined, the Danger Duck costume being called Brave Daffy, you would drop money when you got hit, enemies used to drop money when defeated, bugs could swim, and the mailbox had a different design. This video just shows off the jungle level, but we can see more of the other locations during the making of video. It also shows the hula costume being used at the casino rather than the studio lot, and the Duck Danger costume had a different design. Another thing worth noting is where the idea for the start of the game came from. It at first seems unrelated to the film, but it actually comes from a scrapped idea for the opening of the movie. The prehistoric Tweety Bird also comes from a scrapped ending. I love finding these beta designs and scrapped content. It seems that a lot of licensed games go through plenty of redesigns and many ideas get dropped early on. All of these games also tend to be pretty rushed. You can't delay a game based on a movie after all. Back in action has its flaws, but it is a charming game. My favorite thing is just the banter the characters all have. This place is one big lawsuit just waiting to happen. Hey, my favorite decorating style, oily post retro future. I wonder if there's bingo in these parts. Another charming thing is that you can just whack everyone. Plus, they don't just take it, they will hit you back. It's such a Looney Tunes thing, and I love it. Well, not a difficult game, they did manage to hide some of the collectibles very well. They put in a good amount of secret areas you need to find in order to get all the collectibles. The one that took me forever to find was hidden behind the Singa Owl in the jungle level. That's all I got for today's video. Thanks for joining me on this look over Looney Tunes back in action. If there are any licensed games you'd like me to cover in the future, let me know in the comment section down below. That's all, folks. Dreamers come true.